Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to The High Ground, a Star Wars Shatterpoint podcast. Hello, and welcome back to The High Ground, a Star Wars Shatterpoint podcast. Uh, My name's Mike, and I am here today with Mr. Matt Bronson. How you doing, Matt? Not bad. How about yourself, Mike? I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Um, so Evan uh, is sitting sitting out this episode, and we wanted to bring Matt in because Matt has been running uh, a lot of awesome Shatterpoint uh, kind of like articles and blogs. And I think you had, uh, do you have like a dice thing going on too? I had a dice simulator. Uh, there have been some technical difficulties bringing that over to the fifth trooper but maybe by the time this releases it will be good to go okay that's very possible because i think we're, we're looking at like a two-week lag time right now so um definitely definitely possible but um you've been you've been enjoying writing writing blog articles and, and stepping away from legion a little bit i have been liking shatterpoint a lot um yeah obviously coming from legion the way i describe it i i really liked heroes you know playing like jedi bounty hunters like the more complex um big turn characters in legion and shatterpoint is just that on steroids for me so i've been enjoying it a lot awesome and uh how much uh how much shatterpoint have you played i think let's see on long shanks i'm past 20 games i think at this point i don't think i've hit triple digits uh, but I'm definitely above fifty, I would say. I feel like so, I feel like uh, there's a big difference between twenty and triple digits. <laughs> well, then you pick that's twenty officially recorded games. Okay, and yeah. for those that are unaware, Longshanks is uh, a uh, tournament software, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, and do you uh, has Longshanks been working well for Shatterpoint? I mean. It it works. Um, <laughs> okay, all right. It, we don't, it, we don't it, need it, to go farther than I, that. <laughs> I could never get over the feeling that it looks like it's from the early two thousands still. Okay. Um, it has a very weird built in ranking system, but that's only only matters if you're vain and egotistical like I am. Um, but it it gets the job done. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I definitely, I am interested to kind of, I think we're going to, we're going to be picking Matt's brain today on um, some combo ish stuff. And I think uh, just like competitive shatter point generally. So uh, looking, looking to get your input there for sure. Um, but before we get to that, uh, a couple reminders, actually, I don't have to do our housekeeping reminder because we've got sweet pre-rolls now. Ka-cha. Nice. um so i'm not gonna do that but we did get some news from amg uh, i don't think we've talked about it on the podcast so far we may have talked about it last week i don't remember um but uh mini stravaganza is coming up i'm sure we'll see a bunch of cool um new spoilers for shatterpoint there and we also got some previews for the rest of cad bane and padme amidala's boxes um so we're gonna go ahead and take a look here at sabe and the nabu royal handmaidens um and i think uh matt uh kind of like taking a look at sabe's sabe's card here um do you wanna do you wanna go through all of these individually that's kind of what we have been doing but i feel like it's a little little monotonous but it's um i mean i could kind of quickly do that i've actually gotten to play probably like five games uh, at this point, testing out with uh, the handmaidens and such. So okay. I'm right. quite All familiar right. with them. Cool. Uh, Sabe comes in four point cost. Uh, she's got a tactical ability where all handmaidens can dash towards a primary character when she activates. So that's at first, you know, 
towards it seems like kind of a minor limitation but it is a very real limitation if you get sabe first it's not like kalani where you can just dash everyone forwards because you'll be in front of your primary yeah, um and yeah. then dependent you know mid game you might not be able to dash towards the objective you need but it's still really good lots of free movement it affects herself since she's a handmaiden she has exposed flank which is something we'll see on the other handmaidens as well essentially you get a climb and if one character actually moved up elevation then you also get a focus and sharpshooter one uh so, so that's oh go ahead oh so i had a question about the climb yeah. here um i obviously haven't used sabe or, or the handmaidens yet but um it says each character in this unit may climb and obviously you can't climb if you are engaged does this Correct. this doesn't like break that right you still have to be not engaged to trigger that text yeah. Correct. Okay. It's just like, you know, when scale says, hey, instead of advancing, you can climb, it still follows all the climb rules. So if you start engaged, you'd want to get out of engagement and then climb. Uh, but the good thing there, too, is that because this is a move and especially a climb, and for Sabi, especially, she gets her free dash, you'll probably have extra movement too. hey, I'm going to jump off this platform, you know, or jump dash off this platform just so i can climb back up and shoot you oh interesting uh, okay i see is is a way to go is a way to go and and another important thing actually is that this is a weird interaction that came up once technically your move isn't done until you use the ingress point if you choose to use one because i had a, a situation where i was um moving and i didn't have enough to climb where i wanted but i had enough movement on the climb to get to the ingress point and then go up technically okay. the move isn't done until you're at the top and then you've changed elevation so you do get your focus but uh, i see so effectively you're using the climb like a dash and then yeah. and then you're using the ingress point um and actually this is probably a good we haven't really talked about ingress points a ton on the cast so far mm -hmm. um and frankly <laughs> my in my local games uh we we tend to miss them a lot um so it's uh what is it is it range two of an ingress point? Range, range one range of an one ingress, ingress point. point ingress points can have multiple spots i know there's um some pieces on the core set terrain where it's quite often you get like a, a two level ladder essentially and it overlaps. It goes all the way to the top, but there's like a middle zone. So you could define something like that to say, Hey, this ladder has three spots, the bottom, the middle and the top. So if you enter one, you can exit one of the other ones, or you can just say it has two spots, anything like that. Right. And in the way ingress points work, once you enter it, you can exit at any level, right? Yes. I believe yep. they reworked the wording, so you have to exit at a different level. Uh, originally, than, okay. as worded, you could like enter one level and then just exit the same level to gain like two extra inches. Um, <laughs> okay. But I see that that should be fixed now, from what I can recall on the the splash update they did a while back or mid July. Cool. cool. Awesome. Um, but back well, to Sabe. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about coordinated assault? Cool. Okay. I've, this excites me for two reasons. It's So coordinated assault is basically coordinated fire, but instead of doing an effect to an enemy, you're yep. doing effect, an effect to a friend. So in this case, Sabe gets to dash. That's really good. Um, it's, it's interesting. Handmaiden lists, you have like a bevy of options for coordinated fire, coordinated yep. assault. Uh, usually you have four because every single handmaiden slash padme has one and then usually you have one clone trooper these days so you might not always be spamming it but i use something like you know um uh, ah uh, uh, padme oh, padme padawan ahsoka and her getting ahead of yourself against snips the one where hey clone tro or uh galactic republic supporting unit attacks she can jump make a five dice melee i don't care about the five dice melee I just use it to jump Ahsoka around to get onto uh, objectives so yep. that it's an extra way to get bodies on objectives and someone else's activation. So Sabe is really good for that. It is a dash, not a, not a climb, not a jump. So that's, but it combos well with exposed flank, get high up with exposed flank, and then you can kind of go anywhere with your dash because sure. you can go down with the dash, but not up. 
Um, so you're kind of viewing this as sort of like an additional movement characteristic on her card. Yeah. Know, as opposed yeah, I, to like the other the other coordinated assault or coordinated fire things we've seen are very like they do extra damage or inflict mm -hmm. a status effect or a status effect that leads to damage. Um, but you're you're saying that you feel like this one's pretty different. This oh, it's very different for sure. This one this one helps a lot on the objective game. Because if you think about it, you know, there are going to be situations where maybe you draw Obi-Wan Kenobi, if you're running Obi and, and Sabe for whatever reason. Obi goes, he attacks somebody, but there's two people on a point. He can never take that point um, so alone because best he can do is he can wound one guy or shove that person, whoever he's attacking. But now Sabe can say, hey, I'm coming with you, dash onto the point. So when he shoves that person off, it's two to one and they take it. So it opens up a lot of stuff like that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that definitely seems like it's it's a much more like a teamwork centric ability. So mm -hmm. cool. obviously for that, you want to keep Sabe alive because if she's wounded, this is a going to cost one force, which is expensive yeah. uh, for stuff like this and B moving her around. You'll move around bodyguard, but you won't move. You won't be capturing points. So we can kind of talk about bodyguard. It's the same thing from the magnas. They essentially split up the magna abilities. So this is the one where primaries and secondaries at range two get cover one. So this mm -hmm. applies to herself. Okay. So she She's she always, always is going to be giving herself cover from this. It's fine. It it works. Yeah, yeah. It definitely seems like. Uh... This ability, when you like layer it in with like maybe like a general Kenobi or something, could get like really stack some defensive tech on top of each other for a lot of dice. Mm -hmm. For sure. Cool, cool. Um, so I guess uh, flipping over to our combat tree here. Um, I love it. I love everything about it. Okay, okay. It's... I was I was gonna say nothing here. Like super stands out to me. I mean, I guess her her attack seems. I, for me i'm always looking at expertise like attack okay. dice a lot of attack dice mean nothing if you don't have the right expertise Absolutely. so she starts with seven dice range four can be a little short but it's doable especially with how mobile she is and seven dice becomes nine if you have sharpshooter one and a focus but her expertise is almost always one to one or better so she gets one result on one and it's a crit she gets easy crit access so on nine dice, you're almost certainly getting two crits, which against anyone without crit mitigation is you're feeling good. Two to three expertise, you're getting three results. Four expertise or more, you're getting four results. So your dice are essentially have, you know, I think of it as 75% of that attack die mm -hmm. is hits or crits, which okay. is really good. So if you're rolling eight, you're probably looking around six dice uh, that are coming up hits on average. Uh her tree has the possibility of a triple shove with a pin, so you can get someone way out of position uh, and then pin them so they're not coming back. It's got repositions and jumps, so she can be... She doesn't really need it. Uh, the, the main weakness is she maxes out at six damage. Sure, yeah. She is a handmaiden, so you can coordinate fire with uh, Padme, if Padme's in position, which will max her out at eight damage. And... That's pretty decent. That will one-shot a lot of support units in the game. But then you're not coordinating fire for an expose from ARF or something like that. So she's not a huge damage dealer, but she'll be good at, the you know, on three, she can get a double shove. So even yeah. against someone with Steadfast or someone who's right next to the objective, she can get them off of, of that objective. She's got a similar tree to like Rex in that fashion. And the, like, mm -hmm. there's, there's just a lot of pushes going on. Um, yeah. How do you feel and about she has? Yeah, go for it. Oh, good. I was going to say she has crit mitigation on defense, which is not something we've seen. Usually that's a, a primary only thing mm -hmm. until, mm -hmm. until now. Of course, you need three expertise to do it. And she's only ever getting one block. So defensively, she's kind of squishy, but hey, whatever. Sure. I always uh, I look at these defensive trees and whenever you see the like crit downgraded to failure, it's just like <laughs> it just feels it feels good. It feels really good. Um, yeah, there's a lot of attacks where only crits are getting through. Yeah, the the fact that she's even got like a five expertise on here feels a little bit like 
Like, all right, I guess. I mean, if if you hunker with her at uh, defending against a ranged attack, you're looking. Assuming you have terrain cover, you're looking at eight defense dice. So, five expertise still probably not happening. Don't bank on getting that fancy reposition. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's just like one of those things where the, it's like on the card, but it's also like it's not really on the card. You know? Yeah, you're never really getting there. Cool. Um, let's jump over to her her uh, supporting unit here. So we've got the Nabu Royal Handmaidens, and uh, it looks like they've got basically uh, exposed flank is the the same keyword that um that Sabe has. That Sabe has. So very good. Only one of them has to end at a higher elevation. So you can do like fun tricks where you move one down, move the other up if you have to. Oh, interesting. Um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you could just like each time just kind of they swap or whatever. Yeah, swap spots. Yeah. De game dependent. Yeah, for sure. Um, then they've got coordinated fire, uh, and uh, I can never disarm. This, this yeah. is disarm. So, I, to me, this disarm. is always weapon disrupted. I don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thinking in in different game terms. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's fine. I I think I'll have a future article spoiler probably about all the different conditions and. Mm -hmm the cases for and against them i think this can be really good against something like droids um where they get a lot of out of activation attacks and one of the things that makes something like magnus so powerful is that they can throw a five dice attack at you and get two three crits because of their expertise yeah if you say hey you don't have expertise then those five dice attacks start not doing a whole heck of a lot same with b2s right Sometimes they get a lot of their damage from that guaranteed expertise damage. Turn that off. Not bad. So it's kind of like a defensive coordinated fire. But I'll That's, be honest, when sorry. I've been playing them, it's probably one of the least used coordinated fires I have in the list because I've been running them with, you know, usually I'm using the clones coordinated fire, either 212th or ARF for pin or expose, or I'm using Padme coordinated fire uh, on the handmaidens, or I'm using uh sabe with her dash and then kind of after all that eh, maybe i'll use the um disarm yeah. or if you're going against like anakin or vader disarming them can be pretty good so it, it doesn't hurt yeah i suppose the option is nice it definitely feels mm -hmm. like this is one of the less good um support abilities out there i guess yeah um, um so yeah then they've got intercede we kind of said they split up the magna guard abilities so this is the one if you're in melee with the handmaidens you can't attack primaries or or uh secondaries i honestly i don't rate this ability very highly on handmaidens or on magnas because a lot of the time you want to just kill the supports anyways sure. so saying hey you have to attack the support is kind of like cool i was going to do that anyways <laughs> yeah and i also feel like um I haven't played a lot of Magnus, but I got to imagine that they are a little bit more hardy than the hand Ooh, are here. Yes. Magnus get more defensive dice, better expertise, and better health. These guys, they're only ever getting one block off of their expertise, <laughs> expertise. and they're only rolling four in melee. Um, yeah. I do like that they have eight health. They get more health than clone troopers for some reason because hey, man. clone troopers get boned when it comes to durability. Um but I've been running these guys, actually, my favorite pairing so far with Padme has been Mace. So if you do get Mace in melee, having protection can help quite a bit on 8. 8 with protection feels feels pretty decent, tankiness-wise. It's a little harder, it's quite a bit harder to one-shot that sure. when they're essentially 9 health. Um, so I guess talking about their, their defensive stuff and their expertise, uh, anything, I mean, their, their tree is obviously like pretty bland as most supports are. Um, they do have a heal, I guess. In the first. They have, their, their tree is interesting. I don't know how great it is. I, for the first few games I played with them, I felt like I never got past square one. Sure. Really, you should do better though. If you're getting the focus, you're, you're looking at seven dice, um, if you're near Padme when she has her extra die, you could get up to eight um, when Padme's in her aggressive negotiation stance. A heal on one is pretty decent, but also a jump on one is yeah. not bad at all. Totally. That is very mobile um, because they can get a free climb. They can get a free jump from their attack. Free climb costs a force, but 
exposed flank does give you a climb, a jump, and then you still have a move action. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. Their expertise is good. Uh, the big thing is they don't have a shove. And I really like shoves. Shoves get people off of objectives for you. Yeah, I definitely... Is it... Uh, is it is it the two twelfth that has the shove in their tree? Two twelfth has it on the second one. Yeah, ARF yeah. have it on the second one. Uh, clone commandos do not have a shove at all. Uh, so I would say personally for me, if I'm running handmaidens, I don't really want to have commandos as my other unit. And yeah. usually in a clone unit, you bring commandos because they have scale and can get up high. These guys can do that. These guys can do the up high job, no sure. problem. So I'd rather take 212 or, or ARF. Yeah. Um, the the damage isn't so bad, strong. though. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, what? It's four, three... It's, it's three, th four. On two successes, you get three damage. Do that twice, plus a coordinated fire from Padme, and you're feeling pretty good. This is one of the few units in the game now that can, co that can get two coordinated fires um, because there's two units... Before, when it was all clones, they couldn't coordinate fire themselves. Sure. But now that we have supports and, or sorry, secondaries and primaries with coordinate fire, what I like to do is, you know, maybe first attack, coordinate fire and expose uh, from ARF. Maybe I get far enough to get my own expose, but have a good attack and then follow up with a coordinated fire from Padme for a little extra damage. Because if you get three damage, three damage, plus two from Padme, Boom! That's pretty much every support gone yeah. from uh, gone from contesting. Yeah, I definitely think uh, you know it opens up a little bit more of a of a door there for that for sure. Um, so, as a package, like, how are you generally feeling about like the Padme Sabine Sa Sabine Sabe? I'm Sabine. gonna say Sabine Soon. so many Soon. times. Yeah. yeah, uh, Padme Sabe and the Handmaidens. Like, do you think that this is a squad that, um, like, I feel like some squads you kind of like break apart and mm -hmm. um, like take pieces of them. Do you feel like this is a squad that's like that, or do you feel like this squad is like if you're taking it, you're pretty much taking all three units together? I think I have to try. I I I feel like I would probably take all three units together like 95% of the time. Sure. I'm trying to think if you break it apart, what I would take Padme solo could be useful. You lose out on her coordinated fire, but so be it. You know, Padme Sabe is decent, but at that point, if I have Padme Sabe, like I'll just take the handmaidens. Right, you've got a bunch of things that rely on handmade and keywords at that mm -hmm. point. You might as well, yeah. I th I think this squad could really shine as a uh, premier squad. I think because a couple things. In real life, you could just get a bad table. You know, they exist. They will continue to exist for years. You get a bad table where there's not really good spots where you want to be climbing, sure. essentially. And, you know, a lot of the exposed flank isn't going to work. That's probably less likely. Um, on a shadow point table, there should usually be places to climb. Yeah. But yeah. there can be bad ones. Uh, and then also, because they're so ranged focused, I think they can fo uh, can struggle against like an OB clone list where you're spamming hunkers. They, they don't do enough damage sometimes to really one shot units. Sure. So, and clones, their weakness is getting one shot because they're they're great against shoves. They're steadfast. They can dash back. Uh, so I think maybe a swap in, swap out based on matchup will do these guys well. But I think I think they're pretty solid. Maybe not going to show up in the S tier lists, but I think they will show up in some A tier lists at the very least. Cool. Yeah, uh, they definitely seem like pretty strong. I think for me, um, like we've obviously got a lot of uh clone synergy in the republic right now and it, this is kind of like adding a uh at just like bringing something i think very unique to the table in contrast to what we have access to right now yeah um, it means you can make a clone list and uh keep obi at home and not feel bad about it because you don't rely on obi to make handmaidens abilities function sure yeah that's fair that's fair Cool. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, follow-ups to the Cad Bane preview. Um, we have Aura Singh and the Bounty Hunters. 
Um, and I guess uh, starting off, I think Orasing is Orasing the uh, the first five. Points? Uh, Kalani would be the other five. Okay, all right. It's interesting. Um, Kalani makes sense as a five. His extra dice. It's a very. It's a force multiplier. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting some sort of force multiplier ability on Aura Singh to to justify the cost. She doesn't really have that. Uh, she feels maybe like she could have been a four, but I haven't got her on the table yet to really try her out. Uh, so maybe okay. she'll surprise me. Cool. Um, so I think uh, a bunch of these abilities... I'm not actually sure which ones Cad had and which ones like he had, he had payday right. Like, he does not. It's her and the bounty payday. hunters have payday. Okay. Okay. Um, we can talk about that one. That's the best. Not not like competitively, I think, but that's just as far as making cool and interesting lists. Payday essentially, when you reveal an order card, pay a force. You have any tag you want for that turn. It can be someone else's turn. Right, so if you draw, if you're running these with handmaidens and you draw Sabe, Aura Singh could pay a force. Now she's a handmaiden; she gets to dash with Sabe's ability. Um, it would be busted if it was free, because it would be crazy oh, yeah. spammable. And you just, one, you just have it for every ability in the yeah, game, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at one force, e that's expensive. That adds up quickly. Yeah. And at two force, if you're wounded. I it's cost prohibitive so it's good that it's expensive um because otherwise it would be crazy but I think the problem for me is with how often these guys are going to be getting wounded which I think is often they're not especially durable and sure. supports and secondaries just tend to get wounded you're you're not going to get a ton of value out of this but it's fun it opens up some really cool things yeah, it definitely, I think this is the most unique ability we've seen in the game so thus far, as mm -hmm. far as like what you can possibly do with it. Um, and I think it'll lead into our conversation later about combos and stuff. I don't know if you've come up with any cool payday combos. To talk about. Oh, I kind of left it off the list because I okay. figured those all fell into the more obvious category. Sure, sure, in a sure. sense, just because okay. it's like, I was thinking like not tag combos because this is essentially just like, I get a tag. Uh, we yep. can talk about one right now, though. Uh, Aura Singh, double the contract, double the payout. After she attacks one person, she can do a, a five-dice attack against someone else for a yep. force. Uh, if you have payday and you say you're a, you're a battle droid for that turn, each attack you make, you could get extra dice from Kalani. So that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you would also trigger uh, combat AI protocols from b1 battle droids i believe because i think they care about uh the battle droid tag but uh, that's 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 a way to make that five dice attack a six dice attack it's sure. fine yeah hit yeah, and yeah. run she gets she's actually the example in the rule book about reactives only being one per trigger so hit and run and double the contract double the payout both trigger after she does an attack as part of a combat action yep um Hit and run is she can do in uh, a reposition after she makes a, a combat action attack. So you can either attack twice against two different targets, or you can attack and move, which is good because she doesn't have any in activation movement ability. So I can see a lot of her turns being move, attack, move somewhere else. Sure. Yeah. Now repositions have been very strong in my experience. So I yeah. think that, yeah. And oh. um, she has also a Vader-like ability, but it's just for her. When she attacks someone, she can essentially use the grunts to say, hey, you guys don't matter, you're a distraction. She wounds two people engaged with the target. Or sorry, not wounds. She puts two damage on a unit engaged with the target. If she does, she gets three extra dice for her ranged attack. Um, this feels very situational to me in that trading two damage on something it's like it's like you're kind of like putting two damage on your unit to like maybe put two damage on their unit or like i don't know i mm -hmm. feel like you got to be trying to do something very specific to make this yeah work. it does you it, you can't do it to a wounded unit so you can't cheese it that way um 
one of the one of the things I actually wrote about in one of my previous articles was looking at how likely I was looking at how likely it is for different characters to one shot some uh, support. Sure. And one of the scenarios I looked at was okay, instead of being full health, what if they start with two damage on them, just two damage, and the probabilities go way up. If you think about an eight uh, health support, then doing eight damage versus doing six, it's a lot easier to do six, obviously. Sure. So that is meaningful. I think almost the time where you do it is maybe you have an eight cost support on five damage because they're probably going to die on the next attack anyways. So five versus seven, who cares? Whatever. Okay. That's fair. That's uh, fair. I was thinking like the time I was trying to figure out like when you would want to like use this and the, the use case that stood out to me was maybe um, like maul i don't know like you can kind of like yeah. throw extra wounds on him to like power up his abilities or whatever but um i don't know that still seems like you're putting extra wounds on your primary that maybe you don't need to be i think in a situation where it's like hey i really need to make this a bit i need to get a good attack off here you do it but you're it's probably not something you're doing every single time um cool and so like what are you? How are you feeling about about her combat tree? Uh, uh, that bad, huh? Um, I mean, it's got well, it's got two shoves in the first three. Uh, it, uh, first four. You have to go. First... It's a shove on three. Oh, you have you're to right. start at the bottom okay. left, go to the the other yeah. one, and go up. But, um, she gets a crit to a crit to miss on one expertise, which is pretty great. That yeah. helps considering she's an eight health secondary. Who, as we said. As soon as she gets one wound on her, and this is my big problem with Aura Singh, as soon as she gets one wound on her, everything's so expensive. Sure. It costs sure. two to use any of her reactives. Of, so All of her abilities are basically off at that point. Yeah, for... they start at one force, so as soon as she's wounded, you're looking at two force, and that is a lot. Yeah. Um, even with CAD refresh and, and all that. And her offensive expertise... She gets not a lot of results. I like to look at how many results you're getting. You know, we talked about how I, you know, how great Sabe's was. She gets one damage on one expertise. On two or three, she gets a crit and one damage. That's not great. You're probably so your dice are basically 50-50 because there's half strikes, half hits, and then the expertise is giving you maybe one more hit. So she's rolling seven dice. Maybe you're getting four results through. Which is like, eh, and an, and an extra damage. It's fine. Yeah, but Not also ideal. when you look at a five dice attack, like with her uh, double the contract, double the payout, you want a really good expertise, right? Right. One of the reasons sure. five dice attacks work in droids is a you can buff them up to six dice attacks with Kalani, but Magnus have great expertise, so it's five dice. But as we said, two or three crits. Or you um, do a do a tactical network on another super tack, so you get two expertise, and you get a crit and two hits for three results, right? Or sure. Ahsoka, Padawan Ahsoka, and Rex both get two results on one expertise when they're doing attacks off of their abilities. So she doesn't get that. If you roll five dice, you're not doing a whole heck of a lot, which is why I think hit and run is probably what I'm doing more. There's good damage. I mean. The start of a tree, there's a, a two damage and a strain spot that you're going to have to pass through. She can do five damage on three results. Let's, let's back up. Let's back up. Okay. You, 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 said, you said strain. Like, it was like, um, I, I think I've, strain I, is good. Okay. All right, all right. That's right. That's the question I wanted to ask. Yeah. Again, I'll, I'll, I think this is why I'm really interested to write about it. I think there's really good arguments and situations for every single condition there are times where strain is awesome yeah because you attack someone maybe they have deflect and now they don't want to deflect maybe you attack a clone unit you don't kill it i've had situations with a clone where um they were on four damage in a strain so i just couldn't coordinate fire with them other because they would become wounded as yep. soon as i coordinate fire if they if you had just killed me it would have been better because then I would have just paid the force and gone for it. Sure, sure, yeah. So strain can be awesome. Strain can also be useless. 
Like you, you wound a, a unit and then they do something while they're wounded. They never suffer any effect from the strain. They just get to remove the strain. So you win some, you lose some. But it's no. it's a good one. It's a good ability. Yeah, yeah. I definitely it's just I in a, a lot of my games it's come up like oh th- you know got the strain token taking three damage just is gonna like outright kill me every time and mm-hmm. I don't know it comes up a lot it seems like anyhow um so you're feeling like Orsing is just uh, maybe not cutting the mustard on the on the tree. I think it's it's fine. The tree I don't mind so much as the expertise gives me gives me a little bit of pause considering again that she's the most expensive tied for the most expensive secondary in the game sure but yeah. honestly i think we'll see this with bounty hunters too in my opinion some people are raving about them maybe i just haven't seen something i think they're a bit on the underpowered side but also they they have to be if they were powerful and they have payday that is a, a recipe problem. for terrible balance yeah because payday is the opposite of future proofing Payday is saying anything we introduce into this game that relies on a tag, these guys can get benefits from. Yeah. So you have to be real careful. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Like, you know, you give them like the Sith or the Jedi tag, and it, all of a sudden things. I mean, I don't think that there's any like crazy broken things that you can do that with that right now, but those are tags that could be broken at some point in the future. Oh, right? like exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, because we tend to have i mean look at you know handmaiden it's not a busted tag but you get some powerful abilities because handmaiden is a more restricted keyword versus something like galactic republic you're probably going to get less powerful abilities because it's more of a broad keyword totally these guys can get the most restricted keyword in the game if there's a keyword that's designed for literally one character they can get it all of a sudden. Yeah, totally. And it's like master on the Jedi Council tag, or you know. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh man, Aura Singh gets a master uh, before Anakin does. That's They're, rough. That's yeah, awful. Man, classic, classic. Um, all right, so let's flip over to the bounty hunters. Uh, so uh, they've got that payday ability, um, which allows them to basically swap tags, just like Aura Singh. Um, and then they've got two more. Uh, two on more the tra- on the trail. On the trail, this is their only extra move ability, um, and it's a tactical one, so you're not going to have a lot of flexibility with it. Uh, but at the start, they can dash towards a enemy character. So unlike the Sabe one, if you get this right away, that's fine because the enemies are across the board. Yeah. Um, it kind of prevents you from back capping something, like doing a sneaky, like, oh, I'm going to jump past you to get your back objective. Sure. Uh, because you do have to move towards the enemy. It's fine. It's good. Free moves are always nice. Yeah, I definitely like uh, unlike the clone ones where you have to like spend a force to do the dash and hunker, right? Um, Mm -hmm. These ones that don't cost force seem seem pretty powerful. Obviously, they're a little bit more restrictive, but... That's the big thing. They are quite restrictive because I with with clones you can do that dash whenever the heck you want, so... Yeah. That's, That's the thing too. Aura and the bounty hunters, all your free moves, they're... It's tough. You don't have a lot of flexibility with the moving. Yep. Um, and then they've got tools of the trade. Yep. So that basically, again, one force active ability. You either uh, give someone a disarm or you get sharpshooter uh, two and impact two until the end of the turn. Critically, unlike exposed flank, this does not give you the focus. So if you're using tools of the trade, it gives you impact and sharpshooter, but you still have to take a focus action. Yeah. So Uh, you're looking at move with your tactic ability, focus, tools of the trade, attack, most likely. Yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah. It's, 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 It's fine. Again, once you get to one wound on these guys, and they're not especially tanky, they have eight health, but much like handmaidens, their defensive expertise is not great. Once you get one wound, a lot of their stuff becomes very expensive. Yeah, two two fours for tools of the trade seems seems pretty pretty not great. Not, not amazing. Not amazing. Yeah. Um, flipping over to their their tree here, um, looks like you're pretty much doing damage or or pinning and shoving things, and that's kind. I of I mean, the I. The one thing I really love about this tree 
on two expertise at range, they get a crit, and you only need one result to get a shove. That's fair. For me, I value that highly in the sense of, hey, if I need to shove guys off of points, I can do that pretty reliably if they have no answer for crits. Someone like Django Fett, great defense, amazing defense, can't do crap if you get one crit against him. Sure. So I really yeah. like that. Two expertise on six dice. Eh, it happens. I, I don't know. I can run the numbers, but it's it's definitely less than 50-50, uh, I think. Probably around 40-ish percent of the time you're looking at two off the top of my head. So between the two of them, not bad. If you get a focus, uh, then you're looking at nine dice. You're feeling pretty good at that point that you're going to get that crit. Um, or you could just get a natty crit, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. It, it definitely feels like having access to the shove in the in the kind of tier one um, mm -hmm. is just like very flexible and allowing you to kind of maybe not for sure shove something, but knowing that you can do it with like 50% certainty is often, yeah. often pretty powerful. So for sure. The, I, and, and really that's for me when I would use um, tools of the trade, because if you think about it, you get to add a whole bunch of dice if you use it, but their expertise, melee or range, is only ever giving you one result. So the more dice you add, you're kind of getting diminishing returns because you've probably already used up all your expertise. Sure. Uh, so you're not getting, they're kind of essentially, you're adding dice with more blanks is how I think about it. Yeah, we definitely haven't talked a, a ton about how the expertise works in relation to like dice scaling, but I think that that's like a good point in that, mm -hmm. you know, it in this case, more dice is really not that much more help helpful. Yeah. yeah. There's a point of eh, whatever with, with the attack dice. So yeah, I guess it's, it's like is. Is, that a, is that a logarithmic curve technically? I don't know. Uh I mean it 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 could kind of look like a logarithmic curve. Um sure. yeah, we can say that and we can sound okay. fancy. Awesome. It's a logarithmic curve. Great. Logarithmic <laughs> curve, baby. Yeah. Um, um go ahead. They're like clones plus defensively, you know, which is not great, but not terrible. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. So um, unlike the handmaidens, I feel like this uh, kind of like the Aura Sing, Bounty Hunters um, and CAD are maybe a little bit more designed to be kind of like picked apart and thrown mm -hmm. in random units, right? Uh, just with Payday you know, Payday kind of allows you to like throw or sing wherever. Um, do you feel like there are any specific units you're throwing any of those three units with? Well, um, we'll get to one of those in the combo section. Okay. So maybe right, that'll right, be a good right. transition. Yeah. Uh, one thing we didn't note as well, though, actually, is that bounty hunters are cross era. Everything else is Clone Wars. Oh, that's a good uh, that's Bounty a good hunters can go all the way up to the Age of Rebellion. So that is... Uh, a handy little thing there. So they've kind of future proofed them in a sense of like, hey, because they're generic bounty hunters, you can find generic bounty hunters in any timeline. Sure. Um, so as we as we do that, yeah, you get some cool stuff. Um, as far as lists with these guys, I haven't thought too hard about list building with them. I think droids is definitely one spot to consider. Yeah. Um, especially with CAD, you could take um, Kalani and B2s with nine points uh, because of what he gives you. There are like weird combos you could do where you could pair this squad with Inquisitors and then you get all kinds of weird force refresh. Sure, sure. Um, I think CAD works great with Django because Django just happens to be a bounty hunter, but is also a really solid unit in his own right. Um, so there are spots, but I think I don't want to put them in any list where I'm really relying on payday to do a lot of heavy lifting. Okay. If I'm putting them in, I want to use the occasional payday. I think you have to have a good plan for payday to get enough value out of them. Because as we said, I think they are scaled down such that payday brings them up to okay. a similar level. Um, so I want to plan on how I'm going to effectively use payday, but I also don't want it to be too much of my plan, if that makes sense. Like it's it's finding that middle zone. 
Yeah, it's definitely weird um, in the, you, you, you know, you basically, like every character or unit basically has like four abilities on it for the most part, right? Three, mm -hmm. between three or four payday is taking up one of them essentially and it if it if it isn't doing anything you've kind of mm, spent some spent some points for not a whole lot um yeah so yeah um i think it'll be interesting to see how they fit in with things i definitely think cad specifically with his synergy with bounty hunters could end up like if you could I guess Django is Django is also a secondary, right? Um, yeah, four point secondary for sure. Yeah, but we is there? There's not a secondary, second primary bounty hunter right now, right? Uh no, we've got scoundrels. They still haven't done anything with that. Which Maul Maul's a scoundrel, but yeah, I don't think we have any other bounty hunters. No. We will though. We definitely yeah, for, will. for sure. Like, we know like, Din's coming. If if Legion if Legion is any yeah. indication, bounty hunters will be everywhere in short order. Um, I mean, we might get disguise leia she might have the bounty hunter keyword i don't think so but you know just thinking of releases on the horizon she could have um, the payday keyword though Ooh, yes because they are disguising themselves or basically payday under another name yeah masters yeah, of disguise so, something similar uh yeah. but um yeah i guess uh i think his his ability to like refresh for us with the bounty hunter tag uh is um and pretty, just refresh refresh more force with bounty hunter but really refresh force with anything because he gets yeah. one for any kill yeah two if they're a bounty hunter so i think that's let's transition then we sure, want to sure. talk about non-obvious combos yeah yeah let's do it one i was wanting to look at that I, i'm gonna build around a little bit cad bane and anakin skywalker okay i you're, you're speaking my language let's, very let's force hungry and I'm not super high on him, honestly. But when you have Cad around, what I also just haven't played Anakin since ARF came out. So that's part of it. 501st are like one of the worst units in the game. So now that I don't have to take them with Anakin, maybe he feels better too. Okay. Okay. The expose means he he doesn't need to end, you know, use two force to double attack as often. But if you do have to double attack, now you're probably almost certainly going to kill the enemy yep. so really it costs one force because you pay to get one back with cad that's that's the whole thing there that's the whole thing i also think um one of the issues with anakin in my experience has been uh his kit becomes extremely prohibitive when he gets wounded um mm -hmm. and i feel like that kind of mitigates it to some extent cuz cuz you you you're pretty much always wounding something with Anakin. Like if Anakin is swinging his lightsaber and he doesn't wound something, like you feel pretty bad about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, and I think before Anakin too, like he he encouraged bad decisions in the sense of most of the time he didn't want to attack primaries or secondaries. You should just attack supports. Sure, ARF help because. The good thing about secondaries and primaries, they have better expertise. ARF say, nah, you don't have any expertise. Sure. So there's that. Three force to get one back still kind of hurts with Anakin, but it's it's not the end of the world. Yeah, or yeah. you don't get his fancy bonus, but if you leave them on like two health remaining, Cad can just spend one force to jump in and do his two damage to them sure, uh, sure. to finish them off. You won't get to move the struggle tracker, but you essentially get your force back. So it's like a, a freebie there. So I think I think there's something there. Um, you're probably taking aura, and then I think instead of bounty hunters, I'm I'm looking at maybe clone commandos. Just take another uh, clone support instead of bounty hunters. Yep. Um, and then you know whatever Rex and and ARF probably. So I think there's something there. Uh, that that was my first. We were we we talked before that we might grade these on obvious to non obvious combos. Where where does that fall? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, let's grade them between A and D. I would, I would give that like a C plus B minus. Okay. What am I going for? Am I going for really non-obvious is A plus? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. If it's, if it's like, if it's like completely crazy off the wall, like, uh, I don't know, droids and clones in the same list or something weird, you know, um, we'll, we'll maybe give it an A. And if it's like, okay. Yeah, and if I feel it's like just like all get... the things with the same tags, we'll put it in D. 
Yes, I think we'll have a lot of C's. I basically I was keep I was trying to stay away from things that have tag synergy and things that show up in the same box. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll I'll, I'll I'll keep going down my list. I think this is probably one of the more obvious ones, but I like it. Luminara with Obi Wan, specifically the interaction of patience and for, flow of the Force, mm -hmm. uh, because Obi Wan, if you've got someone in reserve and you draw him, you can put that person top or bottom and put Obi-Wan in reserve. And then yeah. Obi-Wan gets to jump and stuff. Yeah. Um, with the deck peeking you get from Flow of the Force, there have definitely been times where it's like, well, if I didn't have Luminara to deck peek, I would go with this person I have in reserve because they seem like a good candidate to go right now. Sure, but sure. then I look at the top card and it's Obi-Wan. And you can just say, oh, well, it doesn't hurt at all to then just put Obi-Wan in reserve get his abilities off of that, put that unit at the top of the deck. Immediately. What do you know? Yeah. I get to go with them anyways. Yeah. And I got a free jump and some heals. Yeah, that seems good. It's it good. I mean, good. they just make a really good list generally, but that particular interaction, it's a fun little combo. Sure, sure. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a B minus C plus for that. Okay, There's okay. Two, two Jedi Masters right next to each other. Yeah. I've got three... Um, Vader combos here, which are okay. more just like efficiency combos. Uh, one I've really been enjoying is Vader with Barris. Okay. Uh, because one of the things I, I I'm finding more and more valuable these days is a guaranteed attack, or sorry, not guaranteed attack, a guaranteed push or pull, something that just happens. I don't have to roll dice. I don't have to make an attack against you. I just get to shove you range three or pull you towards me range two because there's a lot of really tanky models that are hard to attack otherwise or you attack them and then it triggers an ability so they move anyways and you did nothing republic isn't great for that because basically they have barris and you don't always have the two force for it but what barris does have is a really dope expertise she gets one on one three on two and then if you ever get to five, I think it's still, oh, you've got it pulled up here. I think it's still yep. three. Yeah. Yep. But you're adding more dice and you're, they're still good quality dice. So it's balanced by the fact that she has six dice. But when you get up to nine dice, then all of a sudden, the chance of you getting to the end of her tree and getting a free force push at the end of it goes it's way up. It's pretty high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... You on nine dice with that quality of dice, especially if you're getting you know the the target becomes exposed or something, you're you're feeling pretty decent. Sure. So I, I I've been liking that combo. Okay. Yeah. No, I definitely think uh, the Vader just being able to like, add so many dice um, mm -hmm. to everybody opens up a lot of doors for sure. Um, and I I I'll give I'll give you a, I'll give you a B plus. Okay. For, for Vader and. Uh, and Varys Ovi. How about Vader Handmaidens? Because Handmaidens, you know, they want to be shooting, okay. but okay. Their, their melee isn't bad, and they have a heal on one. So here's the situation that came up for me recently. I could have climbed and shot a unit twice. It was a unit of super commandos. They had a hunker token. I can okay. shoot them twice, and they'll get six defense dice each time because they get hunker and terrain. Or I can climb one into melee to remove that hunker, and then the other will shoot. So now yeah. it's five dice for the melee attack and four dice for the ranged attack. So they're now rolling less defense dice. I take two damage, and then I just heal that two damage back up because each time I attack, I heal one of them. Hmm. So you basically, you get a little bit of freebie in there. Okay. I dig that. Um, I definitely, I definitely think the whole like uh, Vader Padme thing, uh, the Vader handmaiden thing is also kind of like a cool like what if scenario. Yeah. I really like it. It is one of the ones, uh, one of the better combos I found for Padme. I think. I think Mace is number one, and then right after is is Vader. Okay. Okay. I do want to uh, not right the second, but at some point I do want to pick your uh, brain apart about Mace because on the surface. He looks really bad. So I've come around on him in certain circumstances. There are people who are really, really high on him. 
Okay. Um, and I don't see that. I think he's fine. I think he'd be fine at a seven, probably. Taking pawns is is the big drop, <laughs> honestly. Taking um, what? Taking pawns because oh. uh the 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 three cost uh secondary. Who is simultaneously, I couldn't ask for more from a three cost, but he's also just just bad. He's like a mini Rex, a very, very diet Rex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um he just can't affect the board much on his turn. But yeah, um when do you, I think people this party's over is a good ability, right? A range five bubble for steadfast and protection. I think yeah. there's a tendency to shorthand that in your brain to say this is always going to be on. It's a huge area. He's a Jedi. He'll always be engaged. Yeah. But not really. No. Um, I think I don't love that he gets a lot of value from being shatter pointed because I'm someone I'll use shatter points on supports. I'll use it on whatever. Whatever's best. That's, that's my the value with, of the shatter point. That's my issue with, with Mace is that he's like, okay, the shatter point card is essentially your wild card. It allows you flexibility. It's the thing that allows you to kind of like really have some like take control of the game. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of times when you do use it on your best unit every game, but the flexibility of it is really the strength. And mm -hmm. I feel like this ability is just like, yeah, if you've got Mace, you kind of have to. Yeah, you use it on him. You know, you, you don't have to, but it's definitely part of his his value. And like, if your plan revolves around I'm going to shatter point mace, yeah. then great. But then you you gain value when you activate him because of his ability. But then you lose value in flexibility. Tempered aggression is whatever. Like, eh, if you've got force, perfect information. Deciding to reroll ain't bad. Um. But rush to action, moving a whole unit around plus mace, pretty good. Again, that's his only movement ability, so it's inflexible. Yeah. Uh, as far as you know, he gets a dash, and then that's it. So there's a lot of times where it's going to be tough for him to get up onto terrain and contest objectives and get engaged. The reason I really like him with Padme is she has the, I forget what her uh, identity ability is called, but servant of, uh, servant of the people. So when she's not wounded, if she's in her faith and diplomacy stance, wounded supports, Galactic Republic, but that'll be all your supports probably, uh, can still contest if she's contesting that. So a lot, Mace, like, Republic doesn't struggle too much without of activation movement. So Mace bringing more of it is like, it's good. Especially if you're shatter pointing him, you can move people around quite a bit. I think it's really good when those units, even though they're wounded, you can bring them back onto the point and contest because that's the problem. Usually with those kind of abilities, you get to the late game, people are wounded. wounded. Sure. Yeah. I can move them around, but what, what good is it doing? They're not going to contest anything. I can't swing objectives as much as someone like Maul who can pull bodies off whether his friends are wounded or not. Sure, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. I definitely feel like um, serving to the people just the man, I, I just like I want to be able to play with these. I, I haven't yeah. really messed around with them yet. So I'm like talking all in theory craft. Meanwhile, you're over here. I'm like five games here. Uh, <laughs> My trick is I play against myself for <laughs> when I'm doing other things. Slam yeah. out a game in an hour and you go. you're good to go. Um, but I definitely feel like uh, Faith and Diplomacy plus plus Mace could, could be a thing. Yeah. Um, is that on your combo list? No, because I, I maybe I guess it could have been. It do, it's not doesn't have to be Mace specifically, but sure. it's good for Mace because he can move the whole you know, two supports, or yeah. he can move um, uh, Padme into position because she also has to be contesting that same objective. So sometimes maybe she's on a different objective or someone shoved her off. Then you go with Mace and you say, hey, she's back. My supports are doing stuff now. Um, people hype up Mace as like a killer. Like his expertise, if we look at that, it's not great. We talk about 
I like I look for that one to one expertise. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't have it. No. His expertise. If we look at um, Obi Wan's card, actually his his little used mastery, more close to the top there. His little used form three Sorosu. That one sometimes I've gone for being like, oh, this one's good for crits. I'm rolling eight dice. I've got one crit on one to two, two on three, three on four plus. Mm-hmm. That one has left me disappointed. Eight dice, and it's better than Mace's expertise because Mace still only gets two crits on four expertise. Yeah. So yeah, sure, that's fair. if I if I shatter point him in Vapid, I can get nine dice um or sorry 10 dice or switch to this and get nine dice but it's not great it's not awesome um so it's tough it's tough i i think for the most part i'm leaving him in jedi master that's my my default Mm -hmm. and then we will sometimes switch to vapid but i don't think of him honestly as one of the the big killers i can take vader and i can kill way better (laughs) <laughs> or at least just Vader's as well. a monster yeah um, yeah but vader can't move other people around and that does does matter that does help quite a bit so i'm yeah. I, and he brings force refresh you know mace doesn't really need any force and he can bring back force i'm warming up on him but i think i might still be of the opinion that if he was a seven it would probably be okay yeah i think yeah, when yeah. we get more stuff like Wolfpack comes. I'll be, you know, clones and Galactic Republic stuff that doesn't rely on hunker synergy and seven health because they have hunkers. Um, Mace gets better and better, right? Because a lot of clones can already get steadfast. Obi Wan yeah. can give them steadfast because they can hold on to their hunkers all the time, and he can do that when he's hasn't activated yet and he's not engaged. Um. But if we, and then clones pay for that defensive tech by having less health. You look at handmaidens, they don't get any of that. They get more health. Then I can also give them protection and steadfast. Now I'm, I'm really doing stuff versus sure. before eh, I'm not giving them as much. Yeah, so I think yeah. the more of that kind of stuff we get, the better mace gets as well. Yeah. Cause you're giving them stuff that they don't already have essentially. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So I'm 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 not super high on him, but I'm higher than other people. But okay. that was good 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 sidetrack. I like yeah, that. De- definitely definitely higher on him than I am. I definitely was like, you know, as someone who hasn't played him yet, I uh, was like, man, he's basically like the highest cost, uh, the highest I, cost that is not primary in the game, right? That is not what I expected a six to be. Yeah, honestly. that that was kind of yeah. yeah. I definitely am like, oh man, like like Vader is seven and Mace is six, and I mean Vader's very good. Um, yeah. But Mace just it doesn't. There's there's not an ability on here that's like boom, like this is what you want to like really hammer mm-hmm. home. Um, well, actually, too though, one of the things that's really good on Mace that I'm appreciating more is rush to action, moving people into position for fire support or coordinate fire. Oh, so with okay. his ARF, you yep. can dash them to get to range five, kind of like what Talzin does with Night Sisters. You can dash the ARF to get range five on whoever Mace is going to go chop up. Yeah, And then he's going to hit harder as well. Um, so he does, you know, Vader can't do that. If they're out of position, too bad. Oops, you know, they're, yeah. you're not doing anything. Um, so that... As I say, I've thought a lot about Mace trying to make him work. I'm coming around, but eh. yeah. I don't want to get too far into homebrew, but one random thought I had, what if man, I feel missed opportunity if if Mace's Shatterpoint ability, because like the whole idea from the books, which I haven't read but I understand, it's like he can kind of like see them coming or something. Like he, he kind of knows more about like when these events are going to happen. Yeah. If you could just have on demand, like, hey, if your shatter point is in the deck, when you would draw an order card, pull out draw the shatter, shatter point, point and shuffle your deck. That feels like it would be worth a six. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, yeah. I also could um, see like I could see him and Kenobi just like swapping costs. <laughs> like I mean I six 
Kenobi literally because we were play test we were we were testing um not play te- I don't want to say play testing like I'm a play tester but just like trying him out when when we were seeing spoilers that that kind of stuff yeah we didn't know what his cost was we had his box but we didn't know what his the 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 point costs were I thought he was going to be a seven Kenobi <laughs> like sure. yeah, so yeah. good he's so good the fact that he's an eight is like yeah I don't know um but I guess it's good, like, Kenobi, if he was a 7, he'd probably get 4 force, and that would just be like, oh. So maybe that's why he's a 8. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I think May said an 8 would be crazy. The, here's the thing, though. Now that ARF exists, the difference between 7 and 8 in Republic is really, there's no, not much difference for the first one. Sure. Because you don't want to be in a situation where you have two 7s or a 7 and a 6, and you have to take 5 first, because then you cry. <laughs> For the most part, clones feel like they're basically costed around whatever box they came in. Mm-hmm. I kind of put them all at like 3.5. 212, Commandos, ARF, they all kind of cost 3.5. And it just so happens that based on when they came out, some cost 4 and some cost 3. Sure. So, so oh no, I can only take a 3 cost support instead of a 4 cost support. Doesn't hurt when it's ARF. Versus when it was 501st. Yeah, the ARFs are just so much better. It's kind of like, why would you ever, why would you ever touch 501st? Yeah. Do, they have, do yeah. they have a 501st tag? Yes, they do. They do. Rex does as well. That has not been used. So who knows? Maybe, maybe okay. in the future we'll get something. Maybe, maybe we'll get a, a 501st we get... battle squad. Um, I hope. I hope. Maybe, yeah. you know, some like season seven uh, Clone Wars stuff. I think about that. That's basically the core set, right? Like, I don't know. That's well, I didn't paint my 501st up as the what 332nd because I feel like we might get actual 332nd at some point. Sure. But if they didn't do it in the core set, then that's the that's the thing. So I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I don't know either. Um, so uh, before we wrap it up, did you have any other combos you wanted to hit on? Uh, I'll skip a couple, I, I'll, I'll bring up a, 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 a couple more. Okay, okay. Um, Super Commandos. So Mandalorian Super Commandos with Talzin or Bane. So, um... Talzin not, uh, the, the red ones. The, the, red, the, oh, the baddies. Yeah, the, 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 they have the ability No Mercy, so when people dash away from them or advance, okay. if, they, if they leave engagement with the unit, they take two damage. Talzin, she has manipulating hand. She can tell people, hey, you dash that way. That's fun. Um, I wouldn't pay two force just to put two damage on someone, but if I'm sh- if I'm making them dash anyways to clear a point, sure, you know, to make an objective happen, it's really nice to get two damage on top of that. And then Bane has uh, how about you step aside, which gives someone the option to dash or not, so it adds a little bit into their decision making as far as do I dash away from this point and take now a disarm and two damage, or do I sit on this point and get exposed strain? Sure, yeah. I think people are probably going to take exposed strain most of the time anyways, but it doesn't hurt to have this. That's fair. And then the last combo, I've got Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding. So the secondary, Obi-2. Ooh, the, one, the one that nobody plays. So no one plays him because other obi is so good that's what like, i mean that's what I that's mean. Like, the thing it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. obi-wan no like general obi-wan is s tier out of hiding was like a tier like yeah. mind trick is game breakingly good in the right circumstances i just don't play him because a he takes a lot of force and b he's honestly pretty boring to me yes. like on yeah. his actual activation he doesn't really do anything he's he's just like a you know basically you're using him for force push Essentially, he's just a force push stick that you move across the board. Yeah, you know? um, he's not even great at. Or he doesn't. Well, you mean like? My, I mean, I'm, I'm. Yes, uh, just like yeah. with. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. it's fine. But basically, anywhere I would have taken Ob two, I'm mostly just taking Django because like he just does more on his own activation. But mind trick is like wild. It's crazy, um, and that's actually what the combo uh, entails. Okay. If you take him with Magna Guards or now Handmaidens, um, let's say it's him and a Magna Guard on a point. 
someone comes up, Vader comes up and says, hey, I'm going to chop this Magna Guard in half. And he says, mind trick, no, you don't. Choose another target. Vader can't choose Obi-Wan as the target because he can't attack primaries or secondaries because he's engaged with the Magna Guard. I see. But the Magna Guard, that model can't be attacked because mind trick said he couldn't. There's ways around this. You know, if he's engaged with both Magna Guards, he could just attack the other model, yada, yada. But it opens up more situations where mind trick can just say, you know, sucks yeah. to be you. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're not doing anything this activation. No, that's dope. Um, I definitely think uh, there's something to that. <laughs> Building like a control list where you have like, Obi Wan Kenobi and like somebody with the is it what's the rule that does that? Um, uh, intercede. Intercede. The name of that ability, yeah. Okay. Um, there, there's some play there. I dig it's it. Some play. Yeah. I think, just as a general philosophy, I think it's hard to build too much around defensive tech. Um, like I think just defensive tech is just not as useful as offensive tech mm-hmm. in Shatterpoint. There's with too many workarounds. As I say, a lot of the time with Intercede, I don't even care that it's on the card because I'm attacking that unit anyway. So, sure. but there's it, it when it comes up, it's awesome. It's fantastic. That's fair. Um, so I think I'll, I'll give those. I think you're right. I think most came in like around C's. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, I'm. I know that a bunch of our listeners was like, hey, come up with like really like flashy combos. I feel like overall the game doesn't have anything that uh, is warping yet, but I feel like it's coming. Yeah. It's quite possible. I mean, we still have to see Jedi Luke and uh, original trilogy Vader. I yeah. feel like they can do crazy, crazy stuff. Most likely you would think uh, Yoda whenever we get him eventually will probably do something wild. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have ideas. I have hopes, but it's probably not going to happen. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like there will be some warped stuff. Yeah, uh, for sure. But yeah, right now there's really cool stuff and there's synergies important, but there's nothing where it's like, hey, I take this unit and this completely unrelated unit and then they create something that is absolutely busted. Yeah, you're not, you're not, uh, Throwing throwing Hulk through like portals and you know doing stuff mm-hmm. like that quite yet, um, but we'll see. Cool, cool. Um, well, thank you for bringing those combos. Appreciate it. I uh, I definitely you know uh, what uh, I'm willing to say way more about the game than I do at this juncture. So having your input is an absolute delight in that uh, regard. So thanks for coming and hanging out hanging out today. Um, anything you wanted to. Uh, kind of i mean i guess you're you're part of the fifth trooper now so. i am now part of the fifth trooper on the on the shatterpoint side so yeah. yeah just check out um the shatterpoint blog index we ported everything over from bomb bad tactics so there's a lot of really good ones there and uh yeah i got some list building one that will be by the time this comes out uh that article will be up on just kind of how i'm approaching list building and the different roles i'm looking to fill and then for our patrons, if you uh, join the Fifth Trooper Patreon, uh, that's where I, I take that. And then I say, hey, here are some lists that I've been playing around with. And how do they work with the roles I suggested? Am I taking my own advice? What what rules am I breaking and why? Am I, am I, am I taking my own advice? Yeah. Some, something I, I think we all need to hear every once in a while. <laughs> um, spo- spoiler alert, not always, but most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of awesome Shatterpoint content uh, continuing to come, mostly helmed uh, by Matt, and uh, definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing all of it and um, continuing to have you uh, maybe hang out on the podcast. I look forward to it. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, today for uh, hanging out and listening to The High Ground. We will be back um, soon, uh, probably next week. And uh, until then, uh, I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. We'll see you next time. This has been The High Ground, a fifth trooper production.